Hey guys, so right now I'm going to do an audiobook, um, only of the first chapter. Um, now I don't know about you guys, but I like to hear stories, um, chapter by chapter, instead of having to go through, like, ten hours of an audiobook. And I seem to not be able to find this book here on YouTube. It's probably on audiobooks, but I don't feel like paying money just to hear an audiobook. Even if I can get it or not, I'm not going to pay for their services. Um, I heard they don't have a lot of books there. Um, I mean, they do have books, but just not in my genre anyway. Um, sorry if you guys can hear the TV. Um, this is Vampirates, uh, Demon of, Demons of the Ocean. Um, it is about, um, Connor and, Connor and, um, his twin sister. I don't remember her name. Um, and for, oh, Grace. Connor and Grace. Um, I mean, if you guys know it, um, then you guys are familiar with this book. I have book one through four, and I, I read the first book, like, two years ago, but I don't remember it. Alright, so this is the first chapter. I'm going to skip the prologue. And when it comes to the uh, the Chantilly, whatever they call it, I'm not going to sing it. I'm just going to read it, but I'm not going to sing it. Um, so here it goes. Chapter 1. The Funeral. The whole of Crescent Moon Bay turned out for the lighthousekeeper's funeral. That day, not a single black garment was left to buy at the Crescent Moon Clothing Emporium. Not one flower remained at the Happy Stem Florist. Each and every bloom had been uh, fashion not, fashioned into wraiths and floral tributes. The largest of these was a tower of white and red gardenias in the shape of the lighthouse, surrounded by a swirl of sea of the uh, eucalyptus. Dexter Tempest had been a good man. As lightkeeper, he had played an important part of safekeeping at the bed. Many of these now standing around his grave, their bowed necks burning in the late afternoon sun, owed their, owed their life to Dexter's keen eye and even sharper sense of duty. Others had Dexter to thank for their safe passage of one or more family member or close friend rescued from the dangerous waters beyond the harbor, waters teeming with sharks and pirates and worse. Crescent Moon Bay was the smallest of towns, and each of its inhabitants seemed bound to the others as tightly as stitches in a piece of knitting. Such a tight weave didn't necessarily make a comfortable living. Gossip flowed faster through the, me the, through the bay than the rapids of Crescent Moon Creek. Right now, the, for example, there was just one topic of gossip, which was to become the Tempest Twins. There, there they stood in their front of their father's grave, 14 years old, not quite, not quite kids, not yet adults. The girl, tall and lanky, with a rare intelligence, the boy already blessed with the body of an athlete, but truly they had few blessings to count. Now they were orphans, and but for each other, all alone in the world. Not one in the bay had, each, had ever glimpsed the twin's mother, Dexter's wife. Some doubted even that a marriage had taken place. All they knew that one day, <clears throat> Dexter Tempest left Crescent Moon Bay with a mad, with madcap notion to see an, uh, something in the world. And one day, a year or so later, he returned with a heavy heart and two swaddling parcels containing twin children, Grace and Connor. Polly Paget, matron of the Crescent Moon Bay Orphanage, squinted in the bright light <clears throat> to better observe the boy and girl. She appeared to be measuring them, much like an artist making a sketch. Polly was preoccupied 
by the dilemma of which bunks to uh, accumulate to her new arrivals. True, no arrangements had yet been discussed, but surely there was no other option than the orphanage for these two children. The boy looked exceedingly strong. He could be set to work in the harbor, and the girl, though slightly slender in frame, was sharp as a tick, tack. No doubt she'd excel at helping to stretch the orphanage ever-dwelling budget. In spite of herself, a smile crept across Polly Paget's face, er, lips, um, tightly parceled lips. Ah, uh, Lachlan Bugsby, the bank manager, turned his head from the fine floral tribute consumed, commissioned by his wife. Wow, how do I get those two mixed up? And surely unsurpassed in the churchyard to better observe Grace and Connor, how poorly their father had provided for them, if only he had glanced across his banks across his bank accounts once in a while instead of devoting so much of his attention to the shipyards in the harbor. There is so much there is such a thing as giving too much. There is not a mistake Lachlan Bugsby ever in his ever intended to make. Bugsby had his own plans for the twins. Tomorrow he would break the news to Grace and Connor, calmly and gently, of course, that they had nothing in the world, that Dexter's possessions, his boat, and even his lighthouse itself, no longer belonged to them. Their father had left them nothing. He glanced for a moment at his wife, who stood by his side. Dear sweet Loretta, he could see how fond it, how she found it impossible to take her eyes off the twins. It had been a cruel blow to them that they had never been able to have children, but now it seemed that things might make its way out. He squeezed her hand and he squeezed her hand. Connor and Grace knew that they were being looked at. It was nothing new. All their lives, they had been a subject of gossip. They had never escaped the drama of their new arrival at Crescent Moon Bay. And as they'd grown, the emerald-eyed twins had continued to be the subject of rumor and speculation. There is an envy in the small town of Crescent Moon Bay, and people were envious of of the curious twins who seemed talented in ways their kids were not. People found it hard to figure out why the lighthouse keeper's son was much more better at sports than the rest. Whether it was soccer, basketball, or cricket, he seemed to run faster, strike harder, or even neglect to show the team practice for weeks at a time. And the girl provoked equal suspicion. Among her teachers as well as her classmates, she was she with her unusual wide range of knowledge and strange notions about things far beyond her age and station in life. Dexter Tempest, so the rumors went, had a strange father to the pa- uh, to the par, filling their heads with curious tales. Other Others went further still, suggesting that he had arrived home with Crescent Moon Bay with a broken mind as well as a broken heart. C- Connor and Grace stood a little apart from the good folks of Crescent Moon Bay. Now in the congregation at the large swang, sang a stirring hymn of the lighthouse keeper's finally, final journey to the harbor fresh and new. You might have noticed that the small note of discord in the hot uh, stagnant air while Connor and Grace seemed to sing along with the others the song they sang was a different one some other something of rather more like a sea shanty than a hymn I'll tell you a tale of vampires a tale as old as true yeah I'll sing you a song of an ancient ship and it's Mighty fearsome crew. Alright, now that is the end of chapter one. Um, very short, like you like a couple of the chapters in these books. But um hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Sorry I messed up a couple of spots here and there. Um 
I'm still not used to this. So if you liked it, please let me know. Leave a like. Um, subscribe for more content. And let me know um, what you want me to read next. Or if I have like a certain book. And if you want me to read more of um, this book. So yeah, like, subscribe, favorite for more content. And let me know in the description or in the comments what you want me to sing. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.